Voyager's autofocus. We'll do a high-level overview. We will talk about setup, and we'll go through the first light wizard, which is the first thing you should run after setup in order to establish your V-curves in Voyager. So before we get started, let's take a look at the areas in Voyager where we will be working in today's video so you can find them and follow along. First, we need to get into the setup workspace. And setup, if you have this ribbon exposed, which you do by clicking this up and down arrow over on the right, uh, that's the nice big setup icon that gets you into the setup workspace. Uh, the screwdriver and wrench icon here. It's also always visible up here on the very top toolbar or the very top bar of the uh, Voyager window. So once you get into the setup form, we want to click the auto focus button and these are all the settings and controls having to do with autofocus. Also in the autofocus tab you'll find a drop down list where you can choose the autofocus routine to use with Voyager. You can use a third party package like Focus Max, the SkyX at Focus 2 or 3, or Maxim DL, or RoboFire, which is Voyager's built in autofocus routine. If you choose RoboFire, then you must set up a focuser inside of Voyager. ASCOM, uh, you must pick an ASCOM focuser, and you click the ASCOM button to pick the focuser from the, the drop down list. So, for example, you could pick the simulator, click properties, and set up your focuser properties. If you pick a third party package like At Focus 2 in the sky or Focus Max or Maxim DL, you won't see a focuser choice listed here. You have to set up the focuser from the third party software package. The RoboFire Configuration Center is started by clicking this button. And this has the detailed information about your focuser, some information about your V-curves, things specific to the local field, which is the multi-star autofocus, and then just a couple of other miscellaneous settings. So we'll be going over these settings in the video, but I want to show you first how to find them. Then we'll talk a lot about the first light wizard, which you start by clicking this button. It gives you some preparatory instructions of things that you have to do before running the wizard and we'll be going over those in detail. And then we'll show adding a new v-curve with this button which I can't do right now because I'm not connected to my equipment. You can also do a test of your autofocus with this button right here. So that's a quick look at the areas in setup that we'll be working with today and now let's, uh, let's get on with the presentation. Voyager has several options, several different ways it can autofocus. It has two excellent built-in programs, one called V-Curve that is for single star autofocus and one called Local Field and that's your multi-star autofocus routine. You can also use some third-party software packages such as CCDWare's Focus Max, uh, the SkyX, At Focus 2 and At Focus 3, and Maxim DL's Autofocus. And if you use any of these third-party packages, make sure you get them working standalone in those third-party programs before you try using them from Voyager. And then it should work very easily, but you do want to get them working first. So let's look at the built-in routines. First of all, we have the single star V-curve routine. This is best for small objects because it gets the sharpest focus right in the center of your field of view. So smaller galaxies, planetary nebulae, things like that would be best for single star V-curve. Secondly, there is a multi-star local field autofocus. Uses the same V-curve as the single star, but it goes for the best average focus across the entire field of view. So if you're taking an image of a big nebula or something that fills the entire field of view, open star cluster, anywhere where focus across the field is the most important thing for you, then uh, local field is a good choice. Let's take a look at the V-curve single star autofocus routine. So first of all, what is a V-curve? It is a plot of HFD versus focuser position. And what is HFD? HFD is the half flux diameter of the star, of the image of the star. So this is the point 
uh, or the width of the star at the point where the brightness is half the maximum value. And Voyager is going to determine this V-curve by moving the focuser back and forth, taking a lot of pictures, and measuring the HFD at each of those positions. And right down there at the point of the V-curve, the, the bottom of the V, that is the critical focus zone. That is the point where your focus is best. That's what the goal of all this is to do, is to give Voyager some data on how the focus changes as it moves the focuser back and forth. It's going to determine the slope of the left and the right uh, sides of this V. So the V-curve itself, this data is stored in your profile. So anytime you change your optical train, the camera, uh, the telescope, filters, uh, field flattener, focal reducer, anything like that, you should run new V-curves. And rather than just overwrite the ones that you took all this time to build, create a new profile. You can do a save as or clone of an existing profile. Uh, give it a new name that's appropriate for your new optical equipment, your new optical train, and run the first light wizard again. And that'll create and store a V-curve so your autofocus will work uh, with each, each setup. And in order to run our first light wizard, we first have to make sure that, a mount in, that our mount and camera have been set up properly and operation verified. So if you can't take pictures with your camera that Voyager can download and see, then autofocus is not going to work because it has to be able to look at the star images that are being taken by the camera. Also need to be able to move the mount uh, to move to a focus star and to make sure the mount is tracking while you're doing the autofocus. So this, these are the important first steps. Once you know that's working, then you need to connect your equipment from the startup panel. And then there are some very important steps to go through before running the wizard. And we're gonna go through those in the next few slides here. Don't try to skip past these and just run the wizard because it's uh, unlikely to work unless you've done this preparation first. So number one is, is really more a prerequisite than preparation. You need to have a good motorized focuser and it has to handle the weight of your imaging train. So if you, if you have a focuser that slips, uh, if you're imaging near the zenith and the weight of your, your camera, your filter wheel tend to sometimes cause the focuser to slide a bit. That can happen with Crayford focusers and a heavy camera. Uh, you've got a problem here and it's, it's going to be difficult for autofocus to work. And secondly, when you tell your focuser to move to a position, say 500, and then you move somewhere else and then you say, okay, now move to 500 again, it needs to move back to the same position. Because if it's inaccurate and it's moving to different positions and Voyager's measuring different widths of the stars as it's trying to build the V-curve, you're going to have problems. Something that could contribute to this is backlash in your focuser, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's also important to initialize your focuser, and this typically means that when the focuser is all the way in, or if the knob is all the way counterclockwise, this is usually position zero. You may need to use the software that came with your focuser to do this initialization. Normally it'll move the focuser all the way in, and then it'll reset its internal position counter to zero. And then next, you need to be able to move your focuser all the way out uh, or all the way clockwise if it's turning a knob and record that value because that becomes the maximum focuser value and Voyager will not try to move past that, that number. Next, you need to position your focuser somewhere close to the midpoint. The idea here is that as Voyager determines your V-curve, it's going to be moving your focuser backwards and forwards or in and out. And it's important that there's enough room on either side of the initial position uh, for Voyager to do this without hitting the end of travel of your focuser, either your minimum or your maximum. And typically, you want to be able to get good focus near that position. We'll talk about that a bit more in a second. Third step is take those numbers that we just determined, go into the RoboFire Configuration Center on the Autofocus tab in Setup, and 
set those as the in limit and the out limit, uh, as you see here outlined in red. These are numbers that Voyager knows it cannot exceed as it's moving your focuser backwards and forwards. If your focuser has backlash, it means when you reverse the direction of the focuser, there's a lag before the gears mesh and the focuser moves again. So if that happens, you can set up backlash compensation also here in the RoboFire configuration panel. Now sometimes your software will also have backlash compensation and you don't want to have it in both uh, both positions. You don't want it in the driver and also in Voyager because then they'll both be trying to compensate and basically fighting each other. So with, with backlash compensation you check the enable box to turn it on. The normal direction is in which usually means you're moving the focuser against gravity and then you specify the number of steps and what this means is for example if you say you want to move the focuser to position 100. Forage will go 20 steps past that 100 value and then it'll reverse direction and go 20 steps in the other direction. And the idea here is to essentially take up the slack that is caused by backlash. Now we need a focus star. So we want a star in the field of view that is appropriate for Voyager to build the V-curve around. And Voyager will pick a star from everything that it sees in the image that you take. There's a good chance it'll find one in almost any field of view. But for the most reliable run of the first light wizard, it's best to either manually center an appropriate focus star or use the point closest focus star with RoboStar button, which will slew your mount automatically. Now this will work uh, as, w as long as your mount is reporting its position within a reasonable accuracy. And if you have that uh, set up properly with your mount, then you can just say point closest focus star. Voyager will look through its database, find a, find a, a uh, suitable focus star and slew the mount to it. So how do we pick a focus star? And we mentioned manually choosing one. You, you basically want one that's bright enough that Voyager will be able to detect the star as it moves the focuser backwards and forwards and in doing so, it's basically going to be defocusing the star. So the star image is getting dimmer and we don't want it to disappear from view. On the other hand, we don't want it to be so bright that the star profile is saturated or has a flat top because uh, that's not going to give you good HFD measurements either. Now, if you use, uh, we'll, we'll show in a second, Voyager has a way to automatically change your exposure to try to uh, get the star within the right profile. You can look at the results if, you, if you're having trouble by looking at the star profile. Is it flat topping? That means that you, know, you need to find a slightly dimmer star. Uh, or is the star image disappearing? In which case you need a slightly brighter star. So okay, so we have two elements of control. One is the actual brightness or magnitude of the star that we choose. And the second is the exposure we use. The longer we expose, you know, the uh, brighter the image is going to be that we record. Uh, and the binning uh, is another way of making the star appear brighter. So the star you choose, you can choose manually or let Voyager choose. Voyager's database that's built in of focus stars has stars between magnitude four and seven. You can also, and this is on the, the autofocus setup panel, RoboStar general setting. You can set the minimum altitude for your focus star. So if your house is surrounded by trees, and you know that you don't have any horizon uh, or any visible sky below say 30 degrees, then you set the, ma the minimum altitude for a candidate focus star here to 30 degrees. There's also a wrong focus stars manager. So you can explicitly type in the coordinates of a star if there's one you know is not working well for you. Then there is the edit filters, magnitude and exposure button. And if you click that, it'll bring up a dialog and you can manually set the minimum and maximum uh, star between this four and seven uh, list of candidates that Voyager should use uh, for each of your filters. If you have a monochrome camera, it'll be just one case if you have a, a one-shot color camera or just one filter. And then in terms of the length of the exposure that you use, again, in the RoboFire configuration center, uh, which is in the autofocus setup tab, uh, you have camera parameters and exposure parameters that you can set. So you see here you have 
the bits per pixel for your camera, uh, the frame width, and the, the frame is the square that surrounds the star image as it tracks it through the different uh, focus settings. The central region, so this is the percentage at the center of the image that is being searched for a focus star. Target star binning, so what value should it use when it's looking for a focus star and the actual binning to use during the autofocus process. And then what filter to use for V-curve. And most typically when you're setting up your V-curve you want to keep things simple. Use your luminance filter or a clear filter so that you get a good star image. Also here you see exposure parameters. The minimum uh, exposure, the default exposure, and the maximum. And then a little checkbox for smart flux mode. It's good to use that, keep that checked. And what this means is between your min and max, Voyager will automatically vary the exposure length during the V-curve run to try to get that star within acceptable parameters for you. So now we've got our focuser set in the middle, roughly in the middle. And we want to make sure that the stars are close to in focus. It doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough to uh, in focus that as Voyager moves the focuser back and forth to compute your V-curve, the stars are still visible. So with, with many focusers, you have a way that you can have the stepper motor for the focuser be at the middle of its travel, but then perhaps you can disengage the focuser and manually focus your scope so that you have a good sharp image. Uh, or if you're using something like an SCT, sometimes you have the ability to move the mirror without moving the focuser. Several ways to do this, but you, you want to make sure that you have roughly focused stars when your focuser is at the beginning of the wizard routine. All right, we're ready to go. Now we can click the OK button and run the first light wizard. And that takes a few minutes. It shouldn't take really long, but the first time you run it, it's going to try to characterize your focuser and see how much the star profile changes as it moves first a little bit, then a little more, then a little more. So we're not going to show you a whole run here, but uh, I'll show you what it looks like when you add an additional V-curve uh, to give you a sense of what you're going to see on your screen as the first light wizard is running. This is the autofocus tab in setup. Let's click add new v-curve, which will bring up the v-curve wizard and it'll start taking pictures of the star. As you can see on the upper right, there's the star image returned from the camera. On the upper left is the brightness profile of the star image as calculated by Voyager. And on the bottom left, you see the v-curve that is beginning to be drawn, plotting the width of the star, the half flux diameter, versus focuser position on the x-axis. So we're very close to the point of best focus uh, right now. And we're going to start moving back up the other side of the v-curve as the star image gets bigger again. And you can see both from the star profile and the star image a dark area forming in the center of the star from the secondary mirror shadow. And once we're done, Voyager will draw two lines showing the successful v-curve creation and the point of best focus in the middle. And that's it. We've now added a new V-curve characterizing our focuser. And that's how you set up autofocus in Voyager. After you have it set up and you've successfully run the first light wizard, you can run autofocus from several places inside of Voyager. From the on-the-fly workspace, from within a sequence or drag script, or even from the monitor ribbon, which lets you pause a running sequence or drag script, inject an autofocus action, and resume. We'll demonstrate these in a future video, and you can always find more information on our wiki or from the Help tab at VoyagerAstro.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.